Disconnect the washer from the wall outlet. Open the controls panel. Remove the wiring schematic from the washer. You will have to look at the wiring schematic to determine which wires you need to use, to run the motor by itself. In this wiring schematic you will need to use the red wire, and the yellow wire, to run the starting winding. And the blue wire, and the white wire, to run the high speed running winding. In this wiring schematic you will need to use the red wire, and the yellow wire, to run the starting winding. And the blue wire, and the gray wire, to run the high speed running winding. You will need to select the wires according to your wiring schematic. Let me show you how I do it with the wires in my washer. Get a 10 pack of insulated quick disconnect mail terminals. And a 10 pack of insulated quick disconnect female terminals. You could get them at Home Depot or a regular hardware store. You will need a good crimping plier. And an insulation stripping tool. You will need to make two test cords like this, from two power cords. Strip the insulation from the tips of each wire. Apply solder to the tips, to keep the wire strands together. Crimp two female quick disconnect terminals to each test cord. Now you need to separate the wires that you are going to use to run the motor. In this case I will use the gray, and blue wires, to run the running winding. And the red, and yellow wires to run the starting winding. Cut the wires like this. Strip the insulation from the wires. Apply solder to the tips of the wires to help when crimping the quick disconnect terminals. Crimp four female quick disconnect terminals to the upper part of the wires. And crimp four male quick disconnect terminals to the lower part of the wires. When you finish installing the quick disconnect terminals, they should look like this. Connect each wire to the corresponding color. Close the controls panel. Connect the washer to the wall outlet. Set the water level selector switch to high. Set the timer on the beginning of a wash cycle and let it fill with water. When the washer is filled with water, turn the timer off. Now let me show you how to run the motor by itself. Disconnect the washer from the wall outlet. Open the controls panel. Disconnect the wires with the quick disconnect terminals. Connect the test cord with the two small terminals to the red and yellow wires. And the test cord with one big terminal and one small terminal to the blue and gray wires. The connections should look like this. Now you need an extension cord about 9 feet long, to connect the test cords to it. Connect the test cord with the big and small terminals to the extension cord first. Then connect the test cord with the small terminals. 
open the washer door to be able to see in what direction the motor is going to run. Connect the extension cord to the wall outlet. If the washer starts agitating let it run for a little bit. If it starts to drain the water, disconnect the extension cord from the wall outlet to stop the motor from running. And disconnect the test cord with the two small terminals. Turn the test cord plug 180 degrees. And plug it back into the extension cord. Now when you connect the extension cord to the wall outlet, the washer should start to agitate. Let it agitate for a few minutes. Disconnect the extension cord from the wall outlet to stop the motor. Reverse the test cord for the starting winding like this. Connect the extension cord back to the wall outlet. The motor should start running on the drain and spin direction. The neutral drain supposed stop the spin drum from turning for about 2 minutes. Disconnect the extension cord to stop the motor. Wait for 10 or 15 seconds and connect the extension cord back on the wall outlet. Now the spin drum should start spinning at full speed. That is the way that the motor and transmission could be tested without having to use the timer. Click on the following links to see more videos.